Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another in our series of our lightning lunch sessions. And um, thank you very much to everybody who is joining us today, whether that is at our live event or if you're watching this on one of our on demand videos. Again, thank you for your time today. What we're going to be looking at today is computer programming languages uh, with one of our fantastic lecturers, Sylvester Fraser, um, who will introduce himself in just a moment. Just to kind of go through, obviously, how this works today, just a few pointers. Obviously, if you're watching this on a video, you don't have to be worrying at all. If you're watching this live on Zoom, obviously, you can sit back, relax. We can't see you. We can't hear you. You can't accidentally turn your camera on or anything like that. The way to communicate with us is to use the Q&A button. So you'll see that there. Um, if you do think, why are they looking at different directions? We have more than one screen. So we're trying to look at the questions as they come in live so we can answer them to you. And obviously, as we are continuing the way 2020 left off, this is a live webinar. So we apologize in advance if any doorbells go, any animals walk into the background, children run into the screen, for example. But at least you know that we are coming live to from our homes in a kind of still lockdown based environment. I've rabbited on now enough, so I'll hand you over to the main event and I'll hand you over to Dr. Silver, Sylvester Krizner. Okay, uh, can you stop sharing the screen, please? Yes. Uh... Right. Uh, hello, everybody who is watching now live or who is watching on uh, demand. Uh, my name is uh, Sylvester Zana. I am the subject head for computer science and mathematics at the School of uh, Computer Science and Mathematics, Liverpool John Moores University. And uh, today's topic will be about programming languages. So most of the students or uh, uh, lots of applicants they're asking us always during the open days, applicant days, what programming languages do you teach and why it is important to learn different programming languages. So my talk today will be a short overview about the programming languages. First, I will uh, talk a little bit in, in general about programming languages, and then I will go in more details about programming languages we teaching at a school of uh, computer science and mathematics on our study programs. So the introduction, uh, what is a programming language? See, when, when we communicating uh, uh, between each other, we using different languages. So when I communicate with a French person, I can talk in French uh, or the French person can talk in English and we will understand each other. Now, when we trying to talk to computers, we need to use a language that computer can understand. And uh, one possible option for this uh, language is a language called programming language. So a formal definition of a programming language is that a programming language is a set of commands, instructions, and other syntax to create a software program. Now we can uh, split programming languages uh, to different type of groups and uh, on different levels, for example. So we can recognize high level languages or low level languages. High level languages allows programmers to write so-called source code in a natural fashion using logical words and symbols. We can use keywords like function, while, if, or symbols like plus, minus, or non-equal. Then the second set of languages or second group of languages are the low level languages. And we're using those languages because they recognize, they are recognized directly by the computer hardware. And the computer hardware can recognize zeros and ones, and the low level languages are based on uh, zeros and uh, ones. Now let's talk a little bit more about high level languages, because again, this allows us to create a source code. And then based on the source code, we can create uh, applications and the programs that we can run on the computer. So high level 
programming languages, we can split the whole languages in this group in the two subcategories, which are the compiled languages or interpreted languages. And now I believe you'll become familiar with the names like a C++, Java, Python, and so on. So compiled languages are the languages that allows us to create software applications, for example, computer games. Why they are called compiled languages? Because the source code must first be compiled in order to run on a PC or any other, uh, other providers or consoles. Like when we create a computer game, we need to program the computer game. We need to compile it and then we can run it on different platforms like PC, PlayStation or Xbox. The second group of high level programming languages are called interpreted languages. For example, Perl or PHP or JavaScript, HTML. Why they are called interpreted languages? Because the source code can be run through an interpreter without being compiled. So the interpreter is a special application. She's reading the source code line by line and executing it. So for running scripts, such as those used to generate concept for dynamic web pages. Now, uh, before I will go to uh, any more details in a sort of a high level compiled programming languages, let me start uh, with a little bit of history or what are the generations, generations of programming languages, where it's all started. So the very first generation of the programming languages, uh, there were the machine languages. And uh, maybe some of your parents or maybe grandparents, they remember so-called punch cards. A punch card was a piece of stiff paper that holds a digital data represented by the presence or absence of holes in predefined positions. Yeah. You can see here very sort of a, a light example of the punch card. So it was a simply a small paper where there were holes in a paper and the position of the hole, the when the computer was reading the holes, it understood what, uh, what was the command, what the computer should do. So there was the very first generation of uh, programming languages. Then the second generation assembly languages. Uh, here is an example of assembly language. Again, uh, only the sort of a very specialized computer programmers can understand the assembly language because uh, it's, uh, it's not very obvious what the computer should do. But anyway, then there was the third generation and now uh, there was the generation of high level languages such as Pascal, C, COBOL, Fortran, yeah, which uh, most of the languages are still used. For example, C language is very good language for system development. Fortran is really good language for uh, scientific computations. Then the next generation, fourth generation of uh, programming languages were so-called scripting languages as SQL, AppleScript, Visual Basic Script, and so on. So I'll be, be talking about um, SQL in more details later because it's important. Now, do we have fifth generation of the programming languages? Uh, what, or what could be the next generation of uh, programming languages? Like natural language, we can talk uh, with uh, free language speech, like free English and the computer will understand what we need to do or what they need to do. Or is there any automatic code generation? We have, of course, the object oriented languages and so on. So those are the questions. They go slightly behind the content of uh, this talk, but those are the questions that it's good to start thinking about. It. So here is a timeline of a history of programming languages started somewhere in the early 50s. 
even earlier where we start uh, where a machine languages were developed going through the fortran cobol basic pascal for example i have wrote my whole msc thesis uh, using a pascal language in uh, uh early 90s yeah so and then uh, we end up in 2000 of course there are uh, 20 more years or 21 years until uh today's language but we starting to use java for example in 2000 c sharp and uh, there is a python as well so see the development is quite uh long but it's getting uh in the sort of very right direction now i'm uh i'm getting always a question from the students uh and the parents what is the best programming language to learn now my answer to this question is very simple the same algorithm can be implemented in many programming languages so it doesn't matter which programming language do you learn what is important it's to understand the philosophy of programming yeah for example sequence programming or object oriented programming or scripting programming and then if you know the base instructions if you know the philosophy the general principles of this programming language or the programming philosophy then you can use very easily the syntax of the programming language which is using this philosophy for example here is a, a Euclidean algorithm or Euclid's algorithm called greatest common divisor or GCD. So what is the GCD of two numbers? It's the largest number that divides both of them without leaving a reminder. So the algorithm itself is this uh, small square. And as you can see on this example, there are really minor differences in uh, sort of a syntax using c language python and java so again it's uh, confirm my point that once you understand the general principles of computing and of programming you just have to learn the syntactic variations in each language of course uh there are some uh unique language differences which uh, is the my second point so the unique language differences uh, includes like user created types polymorphism uh, very much used in c plus plus or list comprehension exceptions function object and so on so called but in general again if you use the general principles if you know if you learn the general principles of programming then learning a programming language is just to learn the syntactic uh, variations now let's start with uh, the first programming language that we teaching our students in foundation which is a python okay. python is an advanced programming language that is interpreted object oriented and built on flexible and robust semantic so if you learn computer science including python what could be your uh, profession what could be what could be your dream job it's called python developers software engineer or back end developer or simple python programmers and there are major organizations major companies they're using python language like a google instagram or youtube so what are the features of uh, Python language? It is mainly used uh, for web and internet development, but in our school, we're using the Python language also for scientific and uh, numeric computing. It is uh, simple to learn language and easily to read. It is associated uh, with web frameworks for developing web-based applications it has free interpreter and standard library available in source or binary on major platforms 
So you can use Python language on Linux, Unix, Windows, again, uh, different platforms. Now, uh, a fun fact, when, where did it all started? Python was developed in the late eighties in the Netherlands. And the first release to the public was in 1991. Now, the second language that we teaching at a Liverpool John Moore University at the School of Computer Science and Mathematics is Java. All the first year students of uh, computer science programs, they must pass the introduction to programming where we teaching Java language. Java is a general purpose, object oriented, high level programming language with several features that makes it ideal for web-based development. Now, we're teaching Java because it's really good for educational purposes. So uh, again, if you complete your study at uh, LGMU in computer science and you learn Java, your dream job could be software engineer, Java developers. You can develop application in uh, education, finance, healthcare services, hospitality, and so on. And one of the big companies they're using Java a lot is, for example, eBay. Now, what are the features of uh, Java or why is uh, learning Java important? I already mentioned that Java is a really good language for educational purposes, and it allows students to learn the principles of the programming quite nicely and easily. Java has really nice application portability, so you can run Java on uh, different platforms. It is robust and interpreted uh, language, and it has really extensive network library. So the uh, very well known programs that use or are written in Java include Adobe Creative Suite, Eclipse, or Minecraft for the gamers, or even open office. So, and uh, another fact is that Java is the core foundation for developing Android applications or other apps. Now, where it all started, originally Java was known as an Oak. Java was developed in 1990 at Sun Microsystems to add capabilities uh, to the C++ language. Java was developed according to the principles of uh, water, which is right once, run everywhere. The language was introduced to the public in 1995, and now it's owned by Oracle. Now, uh, my language of choice is C++. We're using C++ for like 30 years because uh, I'm teaching students how to develop games. So, and C++ is mainly the language of choice for game development. But let's start with a, a general definition. C++ is a general purpose, object-oriented high-level programming language. When you finish, again, LGMU with the computer science uh, programs and you learn C++, you could become C++ software engineer, C++ software developer, program analyst, but also game developer. So companies you may know that using C++ a lot are Google, Adobe software, or Amazon. And there are more specializations for C++ language, not only games, uh, even the most of the AAA games are written using C++ language. C++ is used for drivers, client server applications, embedded firmwares, and so on. Now, where it's all started, C++ has been released in 1983 and often considered as object-oriented version of a C language. C++ was created to compile lean, efficient code while providing high-level abstractions to better manage large development projects. 
and it is often the first programming language taught at college level. Now, starting with the scripting languages, uh, HTML or hypertext markup language is the language uh, used to create web pages. So when you learn this language, you can become web developer, email is a software engineer and so on. Company using this language is Apple. And the main specialization again is the web development. HTML was created by physicist Tom Berners-Lee in 1990 to allow scientists to share documents online. Before then, all communication was sent using plain text and you can imagine how difficult that was. Another scripting language we're teaching is a JavaScript language. So JavaScript is a client-side programming language that runs inside client browser and processes commands on the computer rather than a server. Now, I already mentioned a Java. Just please bear in mind that despite its name, JavaScript is not related to Java. So when you know JavaScript, you could become JavaScript developer, web developer, again, software engineer. Companies using Java are Khan Academy, LinkedIn, or Yahoo. And what are the specializations and industry where JavaScript is used most? Those are the front end website development and also gaming development. So most of the games for uh, mobile devices that are written in uh, using JavaScript. Now JavaScript was designed by Netscape, by company Netscape uh, quite some time ago and originally known as a live script before becoming JavaScript in 1995. Now, uh, one of the non-development language is SQL. SQL is a database query language. It allows for adding, accessing, and managing content in a database. Yeah, so it allows programmers to perform the common acronym CRUDO or CRUD, which means create, read, update, and delete within a database. So again, when you learn SQL query language, then you could become SQL software or server developer, database tester, software engineer, database administrator, anything to do with databases, you should know the SQL uh, language. Here is a sort of overview what we're teaching, uh, what programming language we're teaching or using in uh, our programs. So I already mentioned that uh, in foundation here, we're using Python. Now, all six programs, uh, when you become student at one of those, I can assure you that you have to pass Java module introduction to programming using Java language. If you decided to study computer games development, together with Java, you will study C++ language as well. Now, most of the programs, they have web development module. So in the web development, we're using HTML5. Then again, most of the programs, they have databases. In database model, we're using SQL. And then together with HTML5 for the web development, we're using also JavaScript language. So see here, most of the languages or all, well, uh, I would say all of the languages mentioned in uh, this presentation are used in uh, one or more our study programs. Now, why we have decided to use those programming languages particularly because there are many of them, okay? I haven't mentioned uh, a, a lot of important languages. So this is just a really small subset of programming languages used in real world. Now, the reason why we're using particularly these languages is mainly employability. Here you can see the job postings 
containing top languages. So if you learn Java in, for example, 2017-18, there were particularly more than uh, 60,000 job offering on the market, uh, in the UK market. Python, JavaScript, C++, those are all the programming languages we're teaching on our courses. And how do we know? Uh, this is another example when you can uh, use one of the uh, web pages for uh, employment and you type Python, you will get list of uh, many uh, job offers like a software engineers or a consultant, data analyst, data scientist in Python. When you type Java, you will get a lot of uh, jobs like a Java developer or junior Java developer and so on. So at the end of my short talk about programming languages, uh, let me sum up. Programming languages are really important part of uh, any of the computer science courses because using programming language, you can create applications, you can create programs, and you can run the programs on different platforms like PC, uh, mobiles, or game consoles. So now I introduce uh, several programming languages that we using or we teaching students at our uh, courses at the School of uh, Computer Science and Mathematics at Liverpool John University. And if you have any questions, please ask now or put them in the uh, Q&A. So thank you very much. And that was all from my side. Thank you very much, Sylvester. Um, so yes, as said, if you do have any questions, feel free to put them into the uh, Q&A function, uh, the box now. We'll keep an eye out on both screens for them and we'll be able to answer, um, hopefully, any questions that we can. If not, we will look up the answers and we'll come back to you as soon as possible. Um, obviously, we're nearing the end now of our Lightning Lunch series. So there are a couple more sessions. We do finish this Friday. If you are interested in, for example, School of Mathematics and Computer Science, we do have a session on Friday uh, from our mathematics team. So do feel free to, uh, sorry, not on Friday, on Thursday. So do feel free to obviously get involved with that. Um, if you can't, again, all of these sessions will be going onto our virtual outreach site. So if you have a little look at the web link there, um, forward slash virtual outreach, all of these will be going up on there, so you'll be able to view these at any time. Equally, we will also be having a YouTube channel um, playlist, so you can go on to there to look at these and all the other sessions that have taken place in this series. Um, so thank you very much for your time. I'll just have a little look. Um, if we do have any questions at all, now will be the time to kind of ask them. So that is it. Thank you very much uh, to everybody who has attended either live or is watching this as an on-demand uh, video. Uh, thank you very much again, Sylvester, and we look forward to seeing all of you, hopefully in person in the not-too-distant future. Take care, stay safe, and we'll speak to you soon.